Let's move on to the match now and get final thoughts on this one. Rob, let me start with you. How do you see this one playing out? Which manager do you feel is probably feeling more pressure to churn out a big result in this one? I think Arteta will, you know, as James said earlier, Arteta will be the one that's feeling a little bit more pressure given what happened against City at the end of last season. Obviously, Arsenal are at home. The onus is on them to be on the front foot and, and try and dictate the game as, as best they can, although that's incredibly difficult against City. Um, I do actually fancy Arsenal in this, so I think that they may just nick it. I think with City missing Rodri and, and De Bruyne, obviously the Saka injury or the possibility that he might not play evens that out a little bit. I just think that, that Arsenal have to win one eventually. That They were so close in the title race last year. Um, they've made some great signings over the summer. City aren't playing particularly well, as I said earlier, not defending particularly well. I think it might be quite tight, um, but I think Arsenal might nick it 2-1. 2-1 for the Gunners. James, what are you feeling? I'm really bad with predictions. Although I did call two two for Arsenal Tottenham uh, on this on this show before. Um, I don't know. I yeah. I, I agree with everything that Rob said. I, I just Saka is, is massive to them. I mean, it, it, I know we've talked about it a lot already, but he they, they are you know he started 87 consecutive Premier League games. I think it is. I mean, it's he's he is and and he has so many touches in attacking areas. They give him the ball. They look for him all the time. He opens things up for them. He makes things happen. If he's not playing, I don't see them winning without him. But I think he will play. I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna sit on the fence here and say a score draw. I think I'm gonna go one-one just because I don't. I, I agree again with Robin that City aren't quite at their best, and they're not quite. I mean, we've got to remember that those two games last season they came when I think it was February and then April. They were starting to get into the groove. They 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 went on one of those runs where they suddenly are putting 12, 14, 15, 16 unbeaten games together. They don't quite look like they've hit their stride with that yet. So. I don't think they're going to go there and win comfortably. And as I say, because Arsenal aren't quite clicking and there is that doubt about Saka, I'm going to, I'm going to say 1-1. All right, so we've got a Gunners win and a 1-1 draw, Stevie. What are you feeling? you got to go for City. <laughs> you know, I mean, got, they got more goal scorers in the team. They've got more match winners. You know, who's the biggest loss? Is it Roddy to City or is it Saka to Arsenal? I tend to think Saka is, a, is going to be a bigger miss to Arsenal. Uh, and he won't be 100%, that's for sure. Um, and then and then he had what we were talking about earlier. When when the manager of a team is telling you that emotionally they struggle in certain periods in a game, and we're talking about the size of this game, then you've got to go with the opposition. So I've got to go City 2-1, maybe 3-1, but I can see City winning this game. Ooh, you took it out of my mouth. I... Honestly, I'm going to agree with Stevie in this one. I think the Saka factor, I guess we'll see how that does play out. I think if Arsenal do get a win, he definitely has to play a massive part in that. Also, nobody's talking about how my boy Julian Alvarez has been scoring left, right and centre. Like, it's nothing. It's nothing. Erling Haaland, who? I'm going to go for Manchester City in this one. 3-1 as well. And then hopefully we'll see a revival after the international break for Mikel Arteta and Arsenal because I live in London and Lord knows I can hear the Arsenal fans groaning from all the way out west. Mm -hmm.